in the last year, since the last uh, Euro Consult, uh, we actually acquired a company, a company based in Herndon, Virginia called Openware, and we also raised a round of financing around that. So that was a big milestone accomplishment for us. We also completed our first two spacecraft. We call them Pathfinder 1 and 2 uh, for in the Black Sky Constellation, and they are ready for launch. Well, hopefully we're really launch ready. Our first uh, Pathfinder 1 satellite is going to launch in 10 days uh, on an Indian PSLV. So it'll be uh, local time in India. It'll be September 26th. And the second satellite is actually a waiting launch. Uh, it was supposed to launch in November uh, this year on a Falcon 9. Unfortunately, they had their failure two weeks ago and uh, has pushed that out into 2017, we believe, and we don't have a firm insight beyond that. Oh, we have a tremendous set of investors. Uh, we've raised close to $50 million in total, uh, with the last round was around $20 million, potentially going to $25 million. Uh, we had a single new investor in this last round. It was Mithril Capital Management. Uh, it's one of Peter Thiel's investment funds. Uh, they've never done a space investment before, and we're super excited to have them on board. They're very progressive uh, and believe in our vision. Uh, so we think that the investment community is still very bullish on space and on geospatial technology. I've started several companies. We've rolled them all together under a single company called Spaceflight Industries with two lines of business. One is Spaceflight with our launch business and the other one is Black Sky, which is our geospatial platform. Uh, so I'd say each company has a slightly different focus. Uh, with Spaceflight, we're enabling access to space. And what that means is in every sense of the word. So lower cost launches, low cost imaging satellites, low cost communications. And what that's allowing it's really democratizing access to space for a wide range of applications, but a lot of which relate to the geospatial industry. So we're just focused on maintaining that. Uh, this part of our business has maintained 100% uh, compound annual growth rates over the last three years, um, and we've got great momentum. Uh, revenue this year will be around $50 million, and our total contract backlog is currently close to $300 million. So that's been tremendous. On the Black Sky side, with this acquisition, we also uh, acquired a big spatial a uh, big geospatial data platform, and so we are rolling that platform out here in October. And with that, you'll be able to order imagery from existing providers and task existing satellites. And with our Black Sky Constellation, we'll enhance uh, the amount of content and frequency that you can do that, and also provide the ability to fuse some of the se sensors together to create insights. We're a little bit different with spaceflight. You know, it's about space access, but specifically our launch business, which has been our high growth, we're unique in that we're really the world's first commercial space line. Just like airlines don't build airplanes and cruise lines don't build cruise ships, we don't build rockets. So we're the first, really the first space transportation company that provides launch services on everybody else's rocket. So what that means is we can provide a flexible array of services. We don't have high overhead and capital costs. Um, so it's allowed us to scale our business pretty fast. And it turns out we fit a very unique but important role in the value chain and that launch providers want to work with a few uh, reputed and established companies to help integrate all these small satellites. And small satellite providers just want to get to space. They really don't care what rocket they go on. They just want to do it cost effectively and on time. And so we provide those services to those different customer sets. First of all, we think that the rockets out there are great and there's plenty of capacity and that we don't need to replicate that. On the satellite side, we started there because there was no satellite platforms that met both our price and our performance as well as our form factor. Uh, as we've seen the industry mature, you know, there are people that are starting to provide some really compelling and capable capabilities and we constantly reevaluate should we be in the business of building satellites. So it could evolve in the future, but for the time being, we're building our own spacecraft. We need to simplify this technology and allow people to use it to solve their daily problems. Um, I think Google's the best example. We use Google Maps just to figure out how to get to point A to point B. You know, that's the, the most important thing. If you think about the three things that we all focus on a daily basis day is traffic, weather, and news, you know, and all have a geospatial content. There's a great example of how we make it available to everybody. 
I think what these next wave of companies are doing is going to start solving some other problems uh, around geospatial to help businesses and governments use that information um, to make where we live a better place.